spitting. <laughs> hey, you, Dr. Shaw. Woo. Well, good evening. Welcome to our uh, Wednesday night equipped service. And uh, if you're, it's your first Wednesday night and you're used to coming to our Sunday mornings, uh, you're going to notice there's some uh, differences from our Sunday morning than our Wednesday night. For example, in your bulletin, there are no notes. No notes. You have to write. Sorry, there's, there's no cheating tonight. Can I, you know, what? And fill it in. You got to listen to the whole thing and ask God, Lord, what are you speaking to me tonight? And uh, the reason why we have our Wednesday night equipped service is to do exactly that. It's to equip the saints to do the works of the ministry. And for you, uh, ministry is not just at church. Ministry is at home. Ministry is at work. Ministry is when you go to the mall, you go to the movies. Ministry is everywhere. And you see, all ministries, it doesn't matter. We are one body of Christ. And so here at New Hope, our, our heart is that we would reach one person who doesn't know Jesus Christ, uh, one relationship at, the, at a time. And so tonight, we're continuing in our series called The History and Authenticity of the Bible. And last week, Pastor Charlie talked about how the Bible was preserved, and that we too must preserve it for the next generation. Next week, join us as Bunny Correa will be sharing on how when we understand the history and authenticity of the Bible, it starts to transform us. But before we get started, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord, and Lord, we just ask that tonight your, vo your voice will be heard. Lord, I pray that you open our hearts, that you remove anything that's, that's trying to cloud us, trying to speak to us that's not you. That you remove all the voices and instead that we would hear just your voice alone. Lord, I pray that you just uh, make our heart fertile so that you can grow your seed. Lord, we thank you so much, and we pray this in Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. amen. Well, uh, in, the Bi in your Bible, oh, by the way, on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, it's a great thing to bring your Bible, because as you notice in, the, in your bulletins, there are no slides, there are no notes tonight. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, it says, all scripture is inspired by God. And is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You see, the reason why we've been focusing on the importance of the Bible, its history, its, its authenticity, is because for some the Bible is the, their manual to life. But just perhaps, just perhaps, it was meant to be so much more. And right now we're going to watch a video clip that will kind of explain it. Hey, hey, where were you this weekend? Oh, I was uh, at a thing with my church. Oh, that's right, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. should have invited me. I've totally invited you to church so many times, but you never go. You're a total atheist. What? You're a total atheist. Dude, I am not an atheist. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. I just don't believe in God. <laughs> yeah, guess I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Learn yeah. something new every day. Yeah. How was it? Sure, it was good, you know. I mean, yeah. God showed up, stuff like that. It was whoa, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God showed up? Yeah, God showed up. Okay, humor me, because I don't even believe in the guy, right? How do you know God shows up? What? Like a big white limo pulls up, man? door opens up, fall grows out, it's all like, ladies and gentlemen, God is in the his hour. <laughs> like steps out, oh, bless you, bless you, peace. <laughs> no, I, I can't explain how God works. It's kind of like a microwave. I mean, I can't explain a microwave, but we use Please, a microwave. Dude, you know, no. it's kind of the same way. God. Uh -huh. Don't give what? me that, okay? What? Oh, I can't explain it. I can't. That's the problem with you Christians. I don't know how to explain God. He's just no, there. No, 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 no. Here, here, here. It's right here. It's right here. Well, you talked about a microwave. A microwave has a manual. I can read it and explain it to you. Right, right, right. I knew you were going with that. Here's our manual. The Bible. Yeah, the this Bible. This is your manual. It's a manual, yeah. All right, show me. Show, show me where it says how God shows up. All right. Well, I mean, um, well, it kind of put me on the spot. I mean, okay, well, John 3.16. Don't give me John 3.16. I'm an atheist, and I know what that says. 
Uh, well, you put me on the spot. I mean, I didn't Dude, have to, that's I didn't not have a manual. No, it that's is. a trophy. It's not a trophy. Why yeah, is it? Is? You don't even know what's in there. I do know what's in no, there. No, you don't. It's something for you to carry around. I mean, the truth is, Christianity is a joke anyway. It's not a joke because I'm going to give you a few scriptures. It's no, a no, joke. No, Christianity is a joke because Christians don't act like they're supposed to Christ. It, Dude, no. you know what? It's, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. Okay? Why? Here's why. Because you and I are the same person. Okay? We act the same. We talk the same. We do the same things. Ask anybody that knows both of us. And they'll say the only difference between you and me is. You don't get to sleep in on Sundays, and I do, okay? So, so it's, it's not a big deal. You and I are the same one. If you're okay, then I'm okay. Mr., what does your mom say? Going to hell in a handbasket, right? If I'm okay, you're okay. It's all good. So not fair. Not fair, you say. What did you just call me? I didn't call you anything. No, you called me a name. What did you just call me? I didn't call you anything. Yes, you did. What no, you I didn't. Call? You said it wasn't fair, and I said that's not fair, you say. Oh. What do you think I said? I thought you called me a Pharisee. What's that? Religious person that looked good on the outside but was empty on the inside. No substance. Yeah, I need to call you that. Look, I don't want to argue with you. Yeah. Me and some of the guys are going to go see a movie later. You want to come? Sure. I'll come pick you up. Oh, hey. It's kind of a racy movie. You might want to bring your manual with you. Just kidding. So I gotta be honest. I remember being an intermediate, and uh, I remember buying my first Bible. But here's the catch: see, I didn't buy my first Bible because I wanted to have a deeper relationship with God. I just wanted to buy my my first Bible because I just wanted a Bible. I wanted to look holy. So I remember going to I think it was Walden Books in the mall, and uh, going going inside and looking looking at their selection of Bibles, and I was like, okay. Which one of these Bibles looks the most holiest? This one's pink. I'm not wearing, I'm not going to get that one. This one, like, this one had, oh, this is the King James Version. And I started reading it. I was like, okay, I don't even understand these words. Okay. And then I started, I just, and so finally I found this one that was like leather bound, you know, and, and the kind. And so I remember grabbing and going, okay, I'm going to pick out this Bible. And I was like, so I, I started walking to the cashier, you know, like, yeah, I'm picking up a Bible. I'm picking up a Bible. I'm holy because I'm picking up a Bible. And so I remember uh, uh, putting it on top of the cash register, and she r- rang me up. And I remember going home and opening my Bible and reading three pages of it. And then I put it on top of the shelf. And that's where it stood or stayed until uh, cockroaches and termites decided to have fun with it. And the reason why I'm sharing that tonight is because the deal is for some of us, the Bible is just a trophy. hate to say it like that, but sometimes we treat the Bible as a trophy. And tonight, you see, we glor- what I want to talk about is the fact that sometimes we glorify the book rather than what's being spoken through it. And you see, 2,000 years ago, there were people that did the exact thing. They were called Pharisees. And just like in that clip, there were religious leaders who knew scripture, but didn't even realize that the one the scriptures were talking about was right there in front of them. And that's the heart of tonight. That we will not be people that merely know things about Christ, but that we will be people who know him intimately. There's a difference. There's a difference between knowing things about someone and knowing them intimately. In today's world, many people pick and prod at the authenticity of the Bible. You know, we have people saying that this is right, that this is wrong, that this is not what it meant, and all this and and so forth. And you know, 2,000 years ago, the Pharisees were picking and prodding Jesus about the scriptures as well. In Matthew 12, 1 to 8, it says, At about that time, Jesus was walking through some grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, So they began breaking off some heads of grain and eating them. But some Pharisees saw them do it and and protested. Look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Jesus said to them, Haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God, and he and his companions broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. And haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests on duty in the temple may work on the Sabbath? 
I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple. But you would not have condemned my innocent disciples if you knew the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. You see, the Pharisees are picking and prodding Jesus about scripture. And sometimes we do the exact same thing. You know, we read 2 Timothy 3.16, but I want to read verse 16 one more time. It says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. You see, as we've been discussing, all scripture, all scripture from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. The fact is, this is the fact, the fact is the Bible is the most accurate, authentic, and historic document on this earth. There are over thousands of manuscripts of both the Old Testament and New Testament that confirm the 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 validness of the Bible. As Pastor Charlie shared about last week, the Masorites were the people that cared for the protection of the scriptures. And if all scripture, if all scripture is inspired by God, not only is the scriptures, not only are the scriptures themselves authentic, but also the way they're put together. You see, the canonization of the Bible was also inspired by God. You see, and I want you, if you can, write this down. You see, the Bible wasn't something inspired by man and put together by man. The Bible was inspired by and designed by God. You see, the Holy Bible is inspired by God, designed by God for us to know God. And you see, that's important for us to know. Why? Because God wants to reconnect with us. Do you know that you are loved so much that the God of all creation is saying, you, right there, I want you. I want to reconnect with you. You see, in the Old Testament, we read time and time again how much God wanted to be a part of his people's lives. He saved them. He delivered them. He provided for them, and he loved them. In the New Testament, he sent his son to save us, to deliver us, provide for us, and to show his unconditional love. And today he's doing the same thing. How do I know? Look from the beginning of Genesis all the way to Revelation, which was written by John. And even to today, God's word has spoken through it all. From God himself in the very beginning to Jesus Christ written in the New Testament to his living word today. He speaks. He's speaking to you right now. You see, the Bible is much more than facts about God. It's our way to connect with him and to get to know him better. See, that's what the Pharisees didn't understand. And that's what the disciples knew. The Pharisees knew the scriptures, but didn't know Jesus. The disciples understood that it was Jesus that the scriptures were talking about. You see, there is a difference between knowing the facts and knowing someone. If I was to tell you to write a biography based on your favorite celebrity, your favorite sports athlete, who, someone that you admire the most, you might be able to do it. I bet you'd write a pretty good biography. If I was to write a biography on one of my favorite uh, NFL players, which is Peyton Manning, I could probably write a, a little decent one. I could, I could tell you all the facts, like, oh, uh, he, well, I could tell you some facts. He was uh, born one day. Okay, more than that. Uh, he has a father whose name is Archie, who played... Uh, quarterback as well in the NFL. His brother Eli also plays quarterback in the NFL. And uh, he used to play for University of Tennessee. He, he, he then got uh, drafted by the Indianapolis Colts. Then last year he got signed to Denver Broncos. And I could tell you all those. I could tell you facts about Peyton Manning. 
You would probably read it, you'd be like, this guy probably didn't even know Peyton Manning, which I, pro I really don't. But, if I was to write a biography about my wife, Katie Ann, I'd probably get killed. <laughs> Why? Because I would share all the stories that I know of Katie Ann. That things that she probably, and because I love you, honey, I will not share it tonight. But uh, I would be able to share, you, you know, her, you know, things that she's done, you know, bad stuff. You know, times are her embarrassing moments, stuff like that. To the point where you would be able to know that I knew Katie Ann. You see, there's a difference. There's a difference. You see, when you, sorry, honey. Uh, <laughs> you see, when you know, when you know the facts about someone, you know what you might get? If you write, if you write a biography about your, your, uh, your favorite athlete or celebrity, you might get an autograph. But you know what happens when you write a biography about, or you, you write about someone that you know, you might get invited to their house. And that's what God wants for us. God wants for us to come home. He's inviting us home. Why? Because he wants to, us to know him. He wants us to have a relationship with him. Not just facts. You see, God's desire for each and every person is that he doesn't want you just to know his name. He wants to invite you into his kingdom of heaven. And that's what I would really like to share about tonight. You see, if all we know are things about God and scriptures to throw out when the time is right, then we're missing the point. If that's all we know, if, that's, if all we know is facts, and all, if all we know is just the scriptures to say it, just like in that clip, we're going to miss the point. You see, it's not about what we know about God, but that we know God that will take our relationship with him to the next level where it will make a difference, not just in our lives, but in the lives of those around us. See, if I was to, if I was to ask you this tonight, who is Jesus to you? What would you answer? Would you answer by listing all the facts? Or would you share intimate moments that you've had with him? You see, the, Pharisee, the Pharisees and disciples both answered this question as Christ walked on this earth. Let's see what they said. Here's the Pharisees' answers. Matthew 9, 34. But the Pharisees said, He can cast out demons because he is empowered by the prince of demons. That's the Pharisees. Matthew 16, 16. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You see, the Pharisees said that Jesus was empowered by Satan. That's what they answered. Peter, one of Jesus' most renowned disciples, answered that Jesus is the Messiah. The Pharisees may have known what miracles Jesus did, but the disciples knew why Jesus performed them. In John 9, 1 to 3, there's a story. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. You see, for us today, we too find ourselves asking, who is God? And the answer is found in one place. This. Not just the Bible, not just the Holy Bible, the living word of God. You see, that's why it's so important to know the history and authenticity of the Bible. It's important to know that the Bible isn't just a document put together by man. It's important to know that people who physically put the Bible together were inspired by the Lord. So that thousands of years later, you and I could have a relationship with him. It's important to know that of the 66 books in the Bible that were inscribed, not inspired, by 40 authors, it is based on what God revealed to them. So that you and I could not just merely know facts, but know him as well. 
It says through the word of God that our faith will be built. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, we must continue to exercise our faith by continually hearing the word of God. The Pharisees' faith stopped because they failed to listen to the complete word of God, which was Jesus Christ. They failed to realize that the scriptures were pointing straight at him. But the disciples believed. They may not have understood it. Did you know that? That the disciples, although they knew the scriptures, they didn't understand any of it. But they put their faith in it. Why? Because Christ was right there. Luke 24, 44 to 45. And this is Jesus saying, and this is after Jesus actually comes back from the dead. He appears to his disciples. It says, then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. See, God's design for us is that we will know him intimately and authentically. And at this time, I want to show you, uh, I'm going to show you an example because I believe that God is saying to you and I that uh, he doesn't want a one-story level relationship. He wants many. And so I'm going to call up two of our youth, Travis and Kyle. And let me explain to you what's going to happen. I'm going to show you two examples. Kyle here is going to represent just having a single level relationship with God. Meaning that you might know the facts about God, you might, you might hear all the stories, you might, hear, you, might know, you might know the scriptures, but you don't know God. And so it's like this. It's almost as if Kyle is going to fall back and I'm going to catch him. But right here. Go ahead, Kyle. One more time, one more time. I promise I'll catch you. I won't sneeze. Achoo! Okay, fall. Okay. See, that's level, that's, that's one level. How many of us want to have a one level relationship with Jesus? See, I think Jesus wants us to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So Travis, come Travis. Travis is going to display our multi-level relationship with Christ. Go ahead, Travis. Go on one step. See, so this right here, this step right here is when you first came to Christ. This is where you were. You maybe accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you said the prayer. Then maybe you got water baptized, started coming to church, and you started to get plugged in. Well, now you're doing your devotions. Now you're reading scripture. As something supernatural happens, not only are you reading scripture, but your heart is earnestly longing for relationship for Christ. Then you start serving. And then your relationship with God is, deep, is starting to deepen. It's start, you're starting to experience things that you've never experienced. You see, if our faith in the word is not there, we're going to miss out on so much. Gonna, uh, that's good right there. So Trav... What I want you to do is I want you to, when I count to three, you're going to fall back. <laughs> I promise I'll catch you. But let me explain to you one thing. I just told Travis this today. So he didn't have last night to pray, 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 and then ask the Lord. But let me explain to you something. I've known Travis for a while. Travis knows I know that Travis loves me. But most of all, he knows that I love him. He knows that I'm not about to tell him to jump off a ladder and I'm not going to catch him. Most of him. <laughs> all right, Trav. Whatever, whatever you do, just don't kick me in the face. All right. When I count to three, just fall straight back, okay? 
One, two, three. Thank you, Travis. You see, there's a difference between what Kyle went through and what Travis went through. Kyle, he didn't have to risk anything. But I'm going to also let you know right now, Kyle didn't experience anything either. When Travis was on top of the ladder, pretty sure he was experiencing some doubts, some worries. But as soon as he let go, he experienced something that no one else could experience. And you see, that's what God wants for us. God doesn't want us to be like a Pharisee who, who just knows the scripture. He wants us to experience him full on. That's what he wants for us. And it starts right here. It starts right here. You see, as we end tonight, I pray that for some of us, it would be a wake-up call. That it's not about knowing everything about the Bible, but knowing the heart of our Lord. And it starts by believing in his living word and knowing that it is authentic. And when we dive into it, not only do we share an authentic relationship with Jesus, but we can then share it with those around us. In Acts 8.28, it says that he refuted the Jews with powerful arguments in public debate. But I want you to hear this part. Using the scriptures, he explained to them that Jesus was the Messiah. You can close your Bibles, put your notes away. <clears throat> Before we end, I want to just share one story. I remember when I first came to, to the Lord and I, um, I had to make a decision. And the decision was, uh, I, had to, I had to decide whether I was going to keep hanging out with my friends or not. My friends from high school. And my friends are great. They were always there for me. But uh, I knew the life that God had called me to live. Part of it was, I had to say I couldn't do that anymore. And so I remember... Uh, I actually remember telling one of my friends, uh, you know, just know I love you guys and know that you guys will always be on my heart. But right now, I, gotta, I, I believe the Lord is saying for me to do something. Some of them, they understood. Some of them was like, what? The Lord, Ben, really? You sure? We know you. <laughs> well, I left. I, I, I kind of cut off ties. And I would see them once in a while, say hi to them and all that. And the reason was because I didn't want to be someone who, who, who would look at what they're doing and judge them. I didn't want to be someone who gave them scriptures to say to change their life. What God had put in my heart was, don't show them scriptures, show them me. Well, uh, this past July, I had my 10-year reunion, my 10-year class reunion. And uh, I was debating whether or not I should go. But I kind of had to go because class, I'm class president. <laughs> And so uh, I remember going, and I told Katie, I told Katie, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do this. And then there, all of a sudden, there came a calm. I said, "Just be Ben, but be Ben who shows him Christ." And so I remember going to uh, our reunion, and I'll, I'll be completely honest, our reunion was at Karma's, and uh, Karma's is a local club, bar, and I knew that many of them were going to be drinking. Many of them were going to be drinking. Many of them were going to be swearing. And I just remember going, okay, God, that was the time I get to not read my Bible to them. That was the time I get to live it out loud. And so I went, and some of them asked me, oh, you're not drinking, Ben. I'll, I'll, I'll drink water or soda. That's all I have. And they asked me why, and I told them because, and I, sh I shared with them. And at the end of the night, this guy that I never knew, he's actually a husband of one of my, my, my classmates. I told him that, you know, I, I started speaking in church and stuff like that. And, and eventually, I believe the Lord's going to move me to become a pastor. And this is what he told me. And it just shook my heart. It's the guy I didn't know until that night. He said, 
I really wouldn't mind, I, you know what? I wouldn't mind coming up and listening to you speak. And I share that because, not because of me, but because I believe that for many of us, our family and friends, they're like the guy in the video. They're like my classmates. They're like everyone else. They don't want to hear scripture. They want to know God's love. If I can equip you with, and if you can be equipped with anything in the world, I pray for you tonight that it would be the love of Jesus Christ. Not the facts about it. You can know the facts later. But the genuine, authentic relationship with the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we talked about the history and authenticity of the Bible. And the truth is, Lord, it is your word that brings us back to you. It is your living word that speaks to us in such a way that it transforms our lives. But not only our lives, but those around us. And I pray for everyone here, Lord, that, that we wouldn't just take knowledge about you, but that we would take all of you. That we wouldn't pick and prod, but instead, Lord, we would take the whole thing, the big picture, that we would take everything about you and put it in us. That we will choose to give you everything, all that we are. I pray, Lord, that tonight, that for some of us here, we move from that one level relationship and choose to go deeper, choose to go stronger, choose to experience you on a whole nother level. You are still here, your word proves it. And just like in the Old Testament, Lord, just like in the New Testament, you're still speaking today. May we hear your voice. May you remove all the voices that tries to, to make us deaf. And may we focus on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you've done. We pray this in your mighty and powerful name. We all said, Amen. Yeah.